Get them so fast. It's so early. What do you mean, burning through what? We, we the last time we didn't we didn't finish the sex ed one until like two thirty in the morning. That was yeah. We screwed that around was, a lot. We didn't. We took a lot of breaks. That's you were doing push ups and uh, You're making the gay porn, box yeah, ball, filming gay porn, <laughs> filming gay porn, and <laughs> got to get the light the light meter. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you pull that? Oh, I got hair in the gate. Now we're in until sleep. He slept in. Oh yes. I got cock shadow. Cock shadow. Cock shadow. An unsolicited <laughs> cock shadow. <laughs> well, that's gonna go. In there. <laughs> that's going somewhere. <laughs> All right, shut your mouths. <laughs> oh. Look in my eyes. What do you see? Welcome to the Crew Roundtable podcast, brought to you by CrewRoundtable.com. A roundtable discussion of all the hot news affecting the greater Toronto area. Featuring Big V, Marco, Gino, and JR. And now your host of the Crew Roundtable, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Crew Roundtable podcast. Uh, On this week's exciting episode... We're going nostalgic and talking about the NES Classic console. Nintendo has brought it back. We're back in 1985. Introducing my panelists, we have Big V on my left. Mario, the <laughs> Star Luigi. <laughs> oh, good intro. Good intro. Nice. Uh, Mark. Good evening. All right. Trademarked that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Gino. <laughs> Thank you very much, Champ, once again for having us in your beautiful home here. Uh, we are going to be talking about the NES Classic or the Baby Ness. Uh, and once again, I feel that uh, I'm going to be in the minority on this one. Like oh. always. <laughs> oh. All uh, right. Thank you, uh, Gino and JR. Thank you, Sal, and thank you for welcoming us in your home. This is, uh, this is going to be a fun topic. It is. It is. It's going to be a great one. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so um, I'm going to say a few words. Uh, the NES Classic Console uh, came out in November, mm-hmm. and uh, it uh, high demand. And some say that uh, you know Nintendo was uh, keeping the supply low to keep that demand high. But uh, Eugene, do you want to kick off this discussion? So the NES Classic is essentially a slimmed-down version of the original 8-bit Nintendo home video gaming console. Yeah. Uh, Now, the the hook for this is that it comes with the original controllers, the Square controllers, um, which could take a beating, those things. So I hope they're still of the same quality. Uh, It also comes with built-in games. And the reason why it's a mini system is because you cannot change the games that are in the system as of this time. Uh, It comes with, I think, 30 built-in... Yes. 30 built-in pre-installed games. And you get the gamut of all the classic games. I think you get Super Mario 1, 2, and 3. I think you get both Zeldas. Um... I think it's one. Or is it? Is it just the one? one. They just don't the put, first one. They don't put Zelda two on there. Just, just so everybody, so. just so, ev- just so yeah. everybody knows and understands, the old system obviously took cartridges. The new slim one, it, there's nothing that opens. You cannot put an insert a cartridge or anything. It's all just a closed box. So if you see a lid there, it's fake. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> thanks. That's what you're saying. No. You can't <laughs> just, uh, anybody who's kept their old games, sorry, you can't use them. No, it, it's it's so it it comes with a it comes with a rush of games. I mean, the thirty games that are on it. Um, the what is the price point in Canada? Because in the US, it's ridiculously cheap. Ninety nine, eighty bucks. Yeah. So in eighty dollars. So, yeah, US, it's fifty nine ninety nine. Fifty nine ninety nine here. So sixty bucks in the US, eighty dollars in Canada. Because mm. for some reason there's a magical wall at the forty ninth parallel, <laughs> and we get fucked. But anyways, eighty dollars here in Canada, you get thirty games. How many controllers? One. One controller. How many? How many does it support? Two. 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 Okay. It's the original. All right. Yeah, they're so, the Wii. Con- they got the Wii connectors, I think. When this was oh, when okay. the when when the NES Classic was first announced, I watched the hype video online, and I lost my shit. Yeah. 
I wanted one so bad. I was ready. If they had one in front of me, I would have bought three. Then when I started to read about it, uh, the bloom came off that rose pretty quick. Mm-hmm. What was the problem? What did you see? Problem? Uh, well, I'll 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 wait. Uh, I because there's a love for this product here, so I'm gonna let people go because I know Champ has spent uh, quite the uh, had quite the odyssey just to just to buy one. Yeah. So why don't you take us through so, that process? <clears throat> Okay, so you couldn't you couldn't find one in the stores. Um, actually, hold on. I actually I remember in November, I was actually went to <coughs> Toys R Us and I was whapping you guys. I this recall. Is within, this was within the first hour of, of Toys R Us opening. Yeah, you were an hour so late. Who wants one? And basically, I think I think almost all of you told me to get one if I could. I yeah. went there. They were all sold within the 20, first twenty minutes of the store opening. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, plus they would have limited you at one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this, you, that's, you, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And, you, and this was a Friday home. morning, too. And, and hopefully we'll touch upon the creeps that are uh, reselling the system for $300 oh. Man horse on eBay. And you know what? They can sell it. If there's anyone that's actually buying it for $300. Well, yeah, then they're, they're, they're the ones that are uh, dumb. Yeah, that, for sure. I, th- I, think, I think the limit to one is, 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 is appropriate. Yeah. So um, you can go buy an emulator for less oh, yeah. than that. So uh, anyone who's buying these things for $300, if you're within the sound of my voice and you bought a NES Classic for $300, you are dumb. <laughs> so, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a technical term. Oh, yeah. So um, Clinical. Clinical term. Let me, clinical let me term. go through this as fast as I can. So the thing was sold out, and maybe about a month later, I stumbled on this website called instock.net. And what it does, it, it monitors stock levels – um, on your product. Mm-hmm. So the featured product, well, you know, you go to NES console and they had Best Buy, they had Walmart, they had Toys R Us and the source of all places. Um, and they would have, you know, they got the link and then they have out of stock. But this also, mon- so this monitors a level. So you can set up a text to your phone and you get the text on your phone, tap on the link and it'll bring you to the store. Um, then they also have a, a browser update, which is what I use this week, where a, it, it, can't, it refreshes every 25 seconds. And as soon as it's, it's, the stock level changes, you get this chime. Did it, did it, did it, like an alarm, like an alarm clock. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. So I signed up and I used the text messages. And I got this text one day. I'm like, yes. I click on it, sold out. And then when you go to the website, you get the time of the, when the thing was st- in stock and sold out. It was half an hour off. And it was in, like, and as an example, it was in stock at 3 o'clock and out of stock at 3.05. Well, well, okay, the, and I, I got the text message at 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the, the problem with that scenario is, though, is uh, it's probably just scraping the HTML off the page. Yeah. Off the, even Best Buy or any, anything... Even their own sites are not accurate to the second mm-hmm. on stock level. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a delay because it gets purchased, you know, it, 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 it's processed on the back end. It's not live. Yeah. You know, it refreshes every 30 minutes or so. Yeah. So if it's, if you're, if it's going to follow that, yeah, you're, you're probably going to end up, you're never going to hit the mark ever. Yeah. So uh, this week... Uh, I was sitting in front of the computer and I'm like, uh, you know what? Let me, let me check this. Let me check the stock level. I'll do it on my own. Right. Fucking thing. So I go and I go to hit the source and it said in stock, like the add to cart button was there. I was like, Oh my God. I clicked it. (laughs) It added it to the cart. And then when I clicked to check out the cart, there was my cart item. And then, uh, you click on checkout. And then a pop-up would come out, and it said, "Sorry, this item is no longer available." Ouch! Wow. All right. Ouch. So like, yeah, what you know what? They should not allow that. The, 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 you should not be able to put it in your card if it's not available. So yeah. So then I, you go. You so I went back to the product page, refreshed the page, and the add to cart was still there. I'm like, what is this? I added it again, and I got the same message when I clicked on checkout. Sorry, this thing's not available. So then I went to the in stock webs uh, in stock website and they have forums they have uh, comments there too that were quite helpful actually so one guy said yeah check uh, he goes uh, he goes check back in 30 minutes I'm like okay he goes and when you add it to your cart just cl- like 
escape out of that pop-up window that says not in stock, but keep clicking checkout. Okay, he goes, just keep clicking checkout. I'm like, okay. And the guy was right, 30 minutes later, the browser alarm chimed. I set that up, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's in stock somewhere, <laughs> right? So the first, I went to the source and it was, you know, the, the in stock cart, um, the, sorry, the buy it button was lit, mm -hmm. did it, added it to the cart, clicked on checkout and uh, the, the, the thing came up again. Sorry, this thing's not available. So then um, just by clicking anywhere on that page, the pop-up goes away and you can click on the checkout button again. And I was clicking for five minutes. And just now there's three stages to the checkout. Okay, so you get, get to one screen, you confer, I don't know what, anyways, there's three scenes. Uh, and the third step is to punch in your credit card information. Right. Okay? So five minutes passed, I got to the second page. I'm like, yes. Dude, not in you, stock. You were playing an online RPG just getting yeah. the console. <laughs> the button, the, the pop-up came up again, not in stock. I'm like, okay, let's let's try this theory again. Another five minutes and I went to the next stage. I'm like, oh my god. Click, 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 click. <coughs> click, click again. Five minutes later, I got to input my credit card. I said, that's it. I'm I'm home free. I I bought this thing. As soon as I put, punched it in, process payment, process was done. Order confirmed. I'm like, yes. How many experience points did you get? Got it. Yeah. I level up. <laughs> hey, I, level hey, up. I leveled up. A couple bags of in-game gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about oh. a steed? <laughs> steed? A unicorn. Oh, I don't want a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's how I got it and, um, well, ordered it. Um, and, and, yeah, anyways, uh, it's but more coming in stock. I believe that the stock levels are, are slowly coming back. Well, I would imagine that the, 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 the shine is probably falling off, the, off, the, off this console. And it's now, probably more and more available to now, stores. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Up until last week, I wasn't all that hot and heavy over this console. It's like, yeah, you know, it's cool. I want it. But it's like... You know what? If they were to hack this box, they did. Uh, right yeah, here. yeah, yeah. If they were to hack this box, and if it was easy, you know, easy enough, that'll rekindle mm -hmm. my uh, my pa my my drive, my passion to get to pick one up. And lo and behold, last week, Benny, Jr. Uh, <laughs> he sent the message over saying, "Yeah, they hacked it." And Benny, you're like. What did I say? You're two days old. The news was two days old or something like that. Oh wow! It was like welcome to Tuesday or something. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then when this I this is what I get for trying to be a good friend. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> but then uh, two days, but then uh, a couple days ago, when I searched again for the hack, that hack that you found, yeah, and the the original one had matured. Oh. That now it's just this gooey that this gooey hack, that just you pop it up. You 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 check you you import your ROM, the game file. What's the interface? USB. Oh, it's just a it's USB. It's USB. So like this Raspberry, my Raspberry Pi. You see how it's powered by uh, it's USB. Got, okay. It's just like that. So the game, so the box is powered by the USB plug. Yes. Yes. Why would they do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wrestling podcasts are a dime a dozen these days. But you want a show that you can feel is yours, and a show you can react on and react with. Well. Asking you shall receive. Main Event Madness is now your reaction show as we're live after every pay per view at 11 30 p.m. Eastern. BlockTalkRadio.com slash pro wrestling dot biz and wrestling dash news dot net are the places to be as we have new episodes every Sunday. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Main Event Madness. Madness Unleashed. A pro wrestling dot biz radio network production. I mean, I'm happy that they did it. Yeah, but it just seems so strange that they would have a that they would make a make a USB input to. Uh, you know what? Yeah, this they, is why Nintendo. would they give, why why would they give this little tiny box its own power converter? Because they because it's it, it's because power boxes are just as. Um, uh, what's what's the what's you're the adding word? to cost at that point? No, no, because they're not, they're not. I'm not saying they have to design their own. There are a lot of standardized, commodified plugs, like you know the little circle plugs. That's standard. It's yeah, just as um, expensive. It would probably be comparable cost to a USB plug. Hmm. This is Nintendo. They 
The, the, the reason they've stu- they stuck to ROMs for as long as they did is because of their DRM. Well, and because everything and, you know, is proprietary with Nintendo. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So why they went with... I mean, I'm glad they went with the... Uh, uh, maybe you they, know, the they USB didn't plug. Care. Maybe they didn't care. It's like yeah, we'll Ma- Maybe they're using that to program it with. Who knows? <laughs> well, there you but, go. There you go. That's. But it just seems strange that, you know... Oh, we hard coded everything and this, that, and the other. Oh, but here's this com- everybody. Here's this one plug that everybody in the world has. Yeah, you know. Let's hope they don't do anything with it. Oh no. You know. Right. Uh, Nintendo missed the boat with this console. Missed it by a mile. And my experience is the exact opposite of our fearless leader champ, because I wanted this thing from the first day, and then as the reviews came out, I lost. All my enthusiasm for it. Okay. Now, yeah. The games we mentioned, Zelda 2 is on it, and Mega oh. Man 2 is on it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mega Man 2, yeah. That may be worth the price of admission alone, but this console, <laughs> they should have done things much better. Uh, number one, aside from the hacking, <coughs> comes with the 30 games, mm. and you have no option to put more games on it. No. Now, that means... Games that you may have already owned, you can't put them on. Games that you have the ROMs that you downloaded from somewhere, uh, you, you can't put them on. And there is no option, if there was ever a place, to have an online store. Oh, yes. To have an app store. Mm. I'm surprised. Where it's just, here's classic Nintendo games for 99 cents each. Yeah. Download them onto your classic NES c- controller, or yeah. your download your classic NES box. Well, that but the, the, I have to admit though, they did have that with the Wii. It, it is possible that there wasn't much call for re- a lot of the off the wall games. Maybe that's how they picked these thirty games was from the sales on the Wii place, the Wii store. <coughs> the original Wii had. A lot of old classic Nintendo games. Sorry, I missed that. Gr, how much are the games? I don't know what the price for the game. Price for oh, the game oh, was. okay. But they were there were a lot of there was a lot, the we had a lot of retro games yeah. for sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it, sold. It, them. It's possible that's how they picked these thirty games. You think they sold them for like four ninety nine? It was. It might have been a little overpriced. They they used their own. The problem is with a lot of these places because they they trade currencies all over the place. You. Buy in game uh, denominate currency, tickets, coins, whatever yeah. that is, and yeah. then you use that to buy the games just just so it can present a consistent price all over the world. Otherwise, you know, Japanese players got to get it in yen. Uh, you know, uh, European players, their prices all have to be in euros, and it it, it becomes a real interface issue. Whereas, you know, if you buy it. Buy the in-game currency and then you do it. It, it, it sounds ridiculous as a, as a two-step purchasing process for in for in in account credits. It's actually more. It's actually less coding because then you you only have to do that conversion once at the purchasing spot point, not every time you want to buy a game. Mm-hmm. And then you have to have every game. The, the, the conversion has to be up to date all the time and. Uh, so that everyone's paying basically the same value. Uh, it, it's a it's a mo- it's a logistics nightmare as opposed to just doing it at the point of purchase of the uh, the first point of purchase of the uh, uh, of the in game in in system currency. Okay, so we agree that not having a store is a, is a, a black mark. Well, maybe, maybe it didn't work with the Wii. I mean, they did have. I'm not talking it. about the Wii. Who know, no, I'm talking about I mean, maybe Ness. But what I'm saying is it that all, if it didn't work on the Wii, and not a lot of people were buying these games on the Wii, maybe it wasn't worth it to put all that infrastructure in for the baby Ness. I mean, if they had to, if they had to build this, then they had to put wireless that more hard, wireless hardware in. So you're, you know. That adds to the cost. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe they had to put an Ethernet cable in the back. Mm-hmm. That adds to the cost. And then they had to create an online store, which is a lot of infrastructure. You know, they weren't, that's not going to be free. They're going to, they're in the, that, that box was going to end up costing $120 by the end of the story. So maybe this, maybe they had to trade off. Like, do we want flexibility and, and high cost? Or 
you know, the people just want to play the more popular games from and the 80s. It, may, yeah, maybe this is not something that they want to support in the long run. Maybe it's just like a one-shot thing. Hey, it's our anniversary, 30 years or whatever. Is it 30 years? Uh, 85? Yeah, probably. It's getting Oh, uh, well, probably. no. No. Yeah. 95, yeah, 05, 15. The point is, I think that they missed the boat on this because when 30 games are great, uh, but you're not going to sit and play those 30 games. Like, there's going to be games there that you don't like. Yeah. You should have the option of saying, I want to get rid of some, I want to get some other ones that I like. I mean, they have this giant library where for 40 years they've just recycled games and sold them to you with different hardware. So make the online store, right? Um, when it comes to the actual gameplay for the unit, I can't get over the short cables. Oh. Okay, yeah. that is a very yeah. valid uh, because yeah. you want to talk about understand. adding costs, adding a longer cable that probably wouldn't have added too much cost. Mm-hmm. No, and if no, you no, want no. to That's, actually would... use this game, it's going to cost me use 12, this 12 system, bucks. You have to buy number one. It comes with one controller. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they made their bones on the two-player games. Okay, it's full of two-player games, so you got to buy another controller. Um, the controllers have incredibly short cables, and we now have incredibly large televisions <laughs> and that then, we did not have before. Well, and so you end up having to play it in, sitting in front of the TV, yes. which, when we originally yeah. played these games, were co- repeatedly told not, <laughs> not to, to do. Not yeah. to do. Even though at that time, the, the, those cables went on for miles. They were six <laughs> foot long cables. You could tie your brother up with them. And, and Actually, we did tie, I did tie my brother up probably. with them. And they were, and they were, they were good, they were functional. But they shrunk the size of the console, and they proportionally shrunk, shrunk the size of the c- cord on the, cord, the cable yeah. or on the controller so now you got to go out and you're going to have to buy after you buy the system you're going to have to go out and at least to enjoy it i think you're going to have to buy two wireless controllers at the at, at minimum minimum mm-hmm. if you want to actually enjoy this system and get the fun and the nostalgia of playing it with someone else because you're only going to play through a couple of levels of mario for so long until you want someone else to experience that game with you and the um, head-to-head games are always the more fun. Yeah, head-to-head, oh, head-to-head, yeah, head-to-head, course, games, course. head-to-head games were the best. Of course. Right? So I don't know who they're trying to serve with this because I wouldn't buy this system and give it to my kid because I don't want him sitting that close to the TV, number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, some of the older kids don't remember the nostalgia for this system. Mm-hmm. So they may look at it and say, oh, this looks chintzy or this looks cheap or whatever, right? Um, they don't have that love of 8-bit. To there be fair, is a, a, lot, a lot of app games are eight, are done in 8-bit. Some of them are. Yeah. So yeah. Is, that it's, 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 oh, everything old is new again. 8-bit is like the new, yeah. 8, well, 8-bit's the new black. Yeah. yeah. And this, is, this, this to me is a pure nostalgia play by Nintendo mm-hmm. to get people to pony up once again. Smart to play Mario Brothers. I'm just glad they didn't put Battletoads on this stupid thing. Battletoads. Oh, that game you could not win. I don't know how they got that. But apparently, but but apparently you can now because you said you can hack this thing. It even does uh, Game Genie codes. Oh. Yeah. It, yes, it game can. Genies. So I think yeah. people who are going to nice. buy this and hack this, I think <laughs> you're wasting your time. Because oh. if you could buy and hack this thing... You could probably set up an emulator somewhere. You could probably <laughs> download ROMs. You could probably already be playing these games for 20 yeah, years, but, and you're just not doing it. Uh, so I don't understand what the point is. Other people buy the NES Mini that you can hack it for them and make money. <coughs> no, come on. No, not everything's like that. Well, I, I know I had I, I had uh, the original Wii. Yeah. It was an early model Wii, so it, it had the, what was it called? You the had twi- some homebrew stuff. It right? had the Twilight hack. Um, it was still vulnerable to the Twilight Hat, which was the the the, the game uh, Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess was vulnerable if you cause, because the Wii had this unique ability that you could move your games onto an SD card. Right. If you ran out of space on your Wii, you could archive them to the SD card and restore them. So someone discovered that if you created a very specially crafted uh, save game with a, with a very particular corruption to it. If you load the game to it, the game would crash, and by and then you could execute a certain uh, oh. some so, then you could execute uh, code, uh, and then you know. But 
Yeah, in the early ones, like you crash the game, launch the software. Crash the game, launch the software. It became tedious. And some people, someone discovered how to, de- how to install a custom channel onto the Wii. And that's, that channel was able to launch software without having to constantly crash Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. It, you, you, they, therefore, it became where you, you crash the game once, it starts the installer, puts the Wii Homebrew channel on your Wii. Oh, nice. And then from there, you could actually, someone created like a, a Wii Homebrew store. A homebrew store where it hosted homebrew for free. Oh, nice! Uh, I I know I installed a, a couple of emulators. I put a, an old school NES emulator on it, and a Game Boy emulator. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't I didn't install any other ones because I, I well I did it I actually I did the Super Nintendo one because it did play use GameCube controllers. Oh yeah, and so you could use the GameCube controller to control sure. all these, and this software, God, it was super well con- constructed. It was well programmed. It, it worked with all the peripherals because we inherently used all the peripherals. So you could either just turn the Wii, Wii controller sideways and use it as a wireless NES remote, or you could you could use, if you wanted one that was a little more modern, you can use the uh, use, use the uh, use the uh, GameCube controller, which was really really nice, and which also had nice long uh, nice long cords. Oh, and it was it was always. I mean, of course, it, the games were. You would have to pirate the games to get the to be able to play them on it. But you know, it had features that the original Nintendo didn't. You could, you have instant save, which a lot of the old Nintendo games did not have. So this was this was put out by some hacker, some pirates, yeah. somewhere who came up with this. Yeah. And you still think it's that hard for Nintendo to make an online store? Well, the the on well. The online store has to be hosted, and, 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 and these guys—it's—it's it's a small community because not everyone wanted, you know. With Wii, you, you do something wrong, you brick the Wii, and Nintendo tells right. you to shove it up your ass because mm. you weren't <laughs> supposed to be doing that to begin with. So there was a there was calculated risk. It wasn't plug and play. You still had to buy a game to do it. So it was a very small community, and when you're when you're dealing maybe with a couple hundred, maybe a few thousand people. Yeah, it, it, you, uh, someone can do that out of their basement This uh, with, this with a high speed. But this is Nintendo, and if you're talking about millions of people, you know, all over the world, that's a, that's a large infrastructure. And, and I think Nintendo had to do, uh, I'm sure they did a cost-benefit analysis on, should we make this wireless? Should we put some Wi-Fi into this? Do we want to do an online store? And I think they figured that, that it was not going. I'm sure they would have mar- sure they did the market research to realize that it wasn't going to fly. Every console has an online store. Mult- Mo- yes, but those co- but those modern consoles okay. all cost three hundred dollar plus. Mm-hmm. Okay, does the Nintendo Switch have an online store that's coming out soon? Uh, I do not Switch. know. It probably, Nintendo Switch is out. It probably will, know. and it is a three hundred dollar plus console. Okay, it's a severely underpowered three hundred dollar plus console, and they're getting shit on left, right, and center because of it. they they, compl- they said the same thing about the Wii, and that sold like gangbusters. This is well, yeah, the, yeah. Wii the Wii did something that no other console did. Yeah. The Wii had a competitive advantage because it was fundamentally different from the other consoles. The, go- the, the Switch is also fundamentally different. It's like. The game, the, the console itself becomes a portable console. PlayStation had that a long time ago with the PS Vita. But that was just that was just the portable thing. You couldn't connect the Vita to your TV. They had that, but these things existed. The point is, investing in a online store is not just for the baby NES. You could use it across your suite of Nintendo applications. You could use it for the you could use it for the Switch. You could use it for whatever their new handheld device that's coming out. The Game Boy Advance Super 3D Color RDS, whatever they want to call it, right? Online components, downloadable content, people buying games and putting them on their phone and getting updates. That's what kids do nowadays. So just getting that store up and running, it's not a one-time application just for that NES, which is which is a uh, which is based on the nostalgia pop. You could leverage putting the money into that store across your whole suite of Nintendo products. And with this particular system here, with this particular system, uh, if you don't like the games that are on it, you can't change it, okay? And I just... I just can't get over. The, I just can't get over the chords. I just the, like the that. Cord, to me, I think the chords are realistically the only the the, the real complaint here. Yeah, oh yeah. Because at eighty bucks, eighty bucks. If Nintendo could have made if Nintendo could have made 
some money selling games, they would have so they would have done it. I guarantee you. I'll grant you. I think eighty bucks. It's not like the library is going to grow. It's a deal. Yeah, bucks, exactly. The library's done. Exactly. Eighty bucks <laughs> to buy this thing is a deal. When you think about six, when you think about 30, 30 games, mm-hmm. it's a relatively good assortment of games that are yeah. on this. And system. let's not forget, the the NES had a, a, a gigantic library. Yes. A lot of those, those games they were, were gar- garbage. They were garbage. The garbage. Everybody was pumping out games. Yeah. Some of them verged on unbeatable. No quality control. The the between. The the either poor quality where you couldn't control the player, or you had really good control quality control quality, but the game was really really difficult. Like only a select few were can, can, realistically could be played and enjoyed. So mm-hmm. the, the, the 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 library is not vast, and I think they just probably went realistically. They probably went through their sales data in the ninety in the eighties. And decided, well, you know, these are the ones that really sold the most. And one thing that you are forgetting about these games, the Nintendo games, you need booklets. You need instruction books to play these games. I wonder if you... So where are the instruction yeah, books for uh, these 30 games? I, I wonder if they're digitized. I, yeah, I wonder game. if they're digit. I don't know. They're not on you the checked? system. They're you not on the their... system. Guy, I got a phone. Well, there's two buttons on the damn thing. You know what? There are two buttons on the damn thing. But how detailed were those instructions? Some books? of the games had a lot of submenus. Some of those, like, some of those games, RPGs, like, like, yeah, some of those yeah, games yeah, the, had yeah. Legend of Zelda, Zelda, Legend yeah. of Zelda in the yeah. book that you needed to finish the game. Yeah, there were there were hints and things in the booklet that you needed. Oh, really? So, where are the books for these things? Do I just go on a website somewhere sponsored by Nintendo? I've never been able to get an answer to that. I don't know. Hmm. It doesn't come on the system. Maybe if they had a you know, Wi-Fi or something built into it where I could just go online and download the I, I book. I think they made an assumption saying that, you know, people who are buying this console will not be playing these games for the first time. And then they're, 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 I think they're gambling on people having already experienced these I games. could not pick up Zelda right now and play. You need books for that kind of stuff. Okay, Mega Man, you could probably you could probably do it. Yeah, and you yeah. could Mega get Man away was a with hard game. Mega Man was hard, but the controls are relatively this simple, is true. right? And even games have changed to the point where games don't come with instruction booklets anymore. They teach you in the game as you play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, no Wi-Fi, no internet connection, short cables. <laughs> it's just the, the the more I read about it, my enthusiasm just. Oh my <laughs> god! So. I mean, oh, champ. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy you have one, but you my enthusiasm one. for it. You just, have, yeah. Well, you you will at some point. Whenever Monday. They, Monday. Whenever the whenever the drone comes and drops it off yeah. at your house. <laughs> uh, no, this was the source. They don't do that. Oh, the source. Oh. That's I got. Yeah, off the oh. source website. Yeah. Is it gonna work when you get it? <laughs> Fuck it, better. I don't if know. any if any of our American listeners are wondering what this <laughs> source is. Radio Shack. Um, radio yeah. Shack. Once upon a time, there was a company that had uh, a license for the Radio Shack name in Canada. They licensed it from sh- from Radio Shack. But at one point, Circuit it City, expired. which... No, no, it didn't expire. Circuit City bought the license, license, the company doing the licensing. Now, for those who don't remember, uh, Circuit City was a computer store like... Um, like Best Buy, who, was, who bought this this company as a, as an effort to make a push into Canada. Um, the only problem is they are all in the states. They are a direct competitor to Radio Shack. Radio Shack sued and and and, and broke the license, uh, revoked the license, because they didn't want the other, they wouldn't they didn't want to license their name to a competitor, a direct competitor. They broke the licensing, and then the company got renamed to the Source by Circuit City. Mm. And then Circuit City to, and, and, and to, took a nosedive and, and, and went out of business, and Bell ended up buying the buying the, the property, and now it's just called the Source, which mm-hmm. is actually owned by Bell Canada. Yeah, yeah, only <coughs> Bell phones are in there now. Actually, for a long for a while, they still had they had to fulfill their Rogers contract. They had a contract with Rogers. Oh yeah. So Bell for a few months was I'm selling so Rogers <laughs> phones. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So yeah, I guess you're out. You're out of the NES. Uh, well, I'm grab. I'm I'm hoping that they will address these issues because the one thing Nintendo has shown is that with their consoles in the past, they're not scared to go and make radical changes to the product. Um, if anything, Nintendo does 
have a very entrepreneurial spirit where they will go out and they will try something new. The Switch is new. Mm-hmm. The the uh, every system that came out after the NES, uh, after the original eight bit, jumping up to the Super Nintendo, um, the Nintendo sixty four, where they changed around the controllers. Uh, they gave it that that crazy wing type thing with the button on top and bottom and thing like that. Um, their handheld systems, they are willing to go think outside the box when it comes to their consoles. So this baby NES, the NES Classic, there's a lot of value there. And I think that with some tweaking, they could make it a fantastic buy and you would get excellent value from it. The system as it sits right now coming off of the shelf, it's almost unplayable. <laughs> it's, you, you, you can't, with... with Less than three foot cables. You just can't play it. Out I, of the I know. Yeah, that, I was know. A level I know. Of, that was a I level of insanity. I don't I understand know. why they made stupid ideas like I that. I mean, you're not electrical wiring cable. Maybe so no one can choke on them or something. I don't know. Trip you, over them. You, you, it's a different I think it was a nickel and dime issue. They probably <laughs> could have charged. Honestly, an extra dollar of cable probably would have covered it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you can buy a lot of cable at uh, 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 wholesale uh, rates. You can buy a lot of cable for like a dollar. For like, I guess those. That's not like we're not talking, you know, house wiring electrical cable. It's very low current. Yeah, they could, they could, they could have. Gino's got a valid, valid uh, criticism here. No, yeah, for sure. They, they could have put in a ten foot cable, and it would have been probably the same price. Yeah, easily. Oh yeah. Easily. Oh easily. Pennies. Easily. Pennies. Easily. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, not. There's not even. There's no debate on that. Yeah. It just. It just doesn't it seem kind of funny where you've got something like the Xbox with the Connect. Where people are playing in like dining room size rooms, and then you've you've got to scooch up to the TV <laughs> it, it, <laughs> to, no, to play it, cross-legged, it, it's to just cross-legged cross- on your knees to play uh, the baby. It just head. seems <laughs> like a very a very wasteful design because you ins- it's almost like they, they we're gonna put these shitty cables on so then we can say a set, a, make them you can charge them an extra fifty bucks get the wireless charger. Well. You buy the wireless charger. I know what do you do with this. Uh, it was they actually have a wireless charger. No, a char- not charger. Wireless uh, cables. Cable. You, you, it they plugs, have wireless cable. It plugs into the into the two connectors. Yeah. yeah. I think it's battery powered, or it might be powered from the charger. That's why those. From the, from the, from that's the, that's why. Because I saw the extension the cable. That's why the connectors are the old Wii cables. Yeah. Are, are they the old Wii connectors? Oh, right. I don't know. So th- they've they've already got third party people who are so selling. It probably delivers power. The the Wii controller powered the the, the little Wii thumb the nunchuck yeah. the nunchuck the yeah. nunchuck so clearly can they're equipped to deliver power so you, you plug this module it plugs into both of the uh, yeah. of the controller thing yeah. and you can connect the wire the, the controller wireless thing. oh okay but well now what do you do with this controller you you wasted money and, yeah. and parts and resources on this controller this extra controller that no one's ever going to use after that. It just seems like a terrible waste of of material. It's just a yeah. You've, you're making garbage. You're making high tech garbage, and which is a shame. It is. You know, instead of making it right, well, you it's know, probably cheap to make, right? But it's also cheap to make right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta, it's it's not that they're not. It's not that it's it's not that as cheap. We're talking fractions of a penny. It, okay. it, pennies. Okay. Pennies. Okay, okay. but okay, we're not the, saying the stuff that stuff is calculated down to pennies, right? Yeah, right. but you you can they could have added an extra dollar to cover that, and it wouldn't have no, it wouldn't have affected sales at all. Uh, mm-hmm. you know what? You think that might have been the difference because hitting that seventy nine ninety nine price point does matter. You don't want to be eighty dollars and one cent. <laughs> right, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I gotta. I, I no. Think I, th- I think I think I think their profit margin on that was sufficient that they could have put ten foot cables. And I don't would, think you're giving them enough credit. No, no, they they, they know what they're doing. They I, what they're doing. Yeah, I, I think I think it was exactly what they're doing. It, it, it was specifically <laughs> under designed so you got to buy a peripheral, Absolutely. which I find is very shameful. Yeah, it's shameful. Shameful. But they're not disrespectful. In the, they're not in the business of getting your admiration. They're in the business of yeah. But when, it, when you make it, we must get when, when you make it that blatant, what can we do? They lost it with the Nintendo seal of approval. Yeah, that was not that was not a seal of excellence. When you make it, when you make <laughs> it super sales are pretty good, right? Uh, it, it is because because people are bu- going on nostalgia, and that's probably what they're doing to compensate for their shitty, shitty design. There are still yeah. some smaller retailers that have not even seen one unit. They haven't even seen one mm-hmm. unit of this thing. So what some what some enterprising company should do is make extension cables. <laughs> no, they have them. 
They're oh, thirteen they bucks. There you go. Wow. Who makes? I them? think they're twelve. They're eleven ninety or twelve. I can't remember. I see them though. U.S. I think it's time to look up no, eBay. No, Canadian. Canadian? Canadian, yeah. How long are the ex- how long are the extension games? Twenty four feet? No, I I don't know. I seen them though. I have seen them across the street. Really, yeah. You can really, yeah, you can really <laughs> tie your brother up with those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but they they do have them. They mm-hmm. have they have the, the 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 console, then they have the extra controller, and then they have extension cables. Oh, okay. And they're made by there's two different kinds. So I think I don't know if they're both third party, different third party, but, mm-hmm. but anyways, that's uh, let's wrap it up. All right. That's a great, uh, great thing. Uh, so let's close it up here. Uh, Big V, what yeah. do you have to say? What are your closing words on this uh, mini console? You still got the uh, hard-on for it? Uh, if I can get it, why not? be nice and fun. Uh, still got nostalgia. For the <laughs> good, <laughs> good. I'll keep searching. I'll keep searching. Still got the nostalgia for it, and uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not exactly a gamer. Those are pretty much the games I think that uh, my hand and eye coordination uh, can handle. Hey Pretty man, much. what do you mean? Uh, you you think you could handle Mega Man Two right now? I don't know. No, no. Right now, no. no. We couldn't handle Mega Man Two when we were young and spry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mega Man. But uh, and hearing Throw that, your back hearing, Mega Man Two, he- hearing that you uh, you you can uh, modify it and add more games afterwards, it's it's a positive. It's uh, got even longer. It speaks to your inner pirate. It's. Oh. it's, it's <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> That's the old uh, yeah. old NES sound you effect. Can, yeah. You can't go wrong with getting more. Yeah. This tri- Thank you, Big V. Um, Three hundred points for you on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, episode. Marco, any closing thoughts? I never owned the original. Uh huh. I never you owned. Suck. I never owned oh. any of these types of games, mm-hmm. so oh I didn't get God. the nostalgia you at never, all. You, you oh. never played it. Anyway? You you were a deprived I child. I played it at a cousin's place. Yeah. in the yeah. basement. Yeah, but that's that's for that's, a very short period of that's time. That's the fun. And then I figured the basement. What is this? I just never got it. I never got it. Oh. hundred so, points for you. So seventy nine ninety nine seems ridiculous to me. <laughs> For a whole different set considering of those <laughs> ga- Considering the games that are on them, yeah. once sold for $79.99 a piece. Individually. Were they $79? Yeah. They were pretty... Some of them Nintendo were... Nintendo was... Not all of them. Not all of them. Some of them were expensive. Okay. The, new ones, the new ones that came out, when you had, like, Zelda 2 come out... Okay. And it was a gold package. Yeah. When you had Super Mario 3 come out and there was a movie it, behind it... It got <gasps> up to $79? Like, it, they, were, they were expensive. You're talking about the good ones. The higher ones. The, higher, yeah, the, ones. the, the uh, name brand, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the gold Konami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, I have to look at the old Ka- consumers Konami, distributing Konami, Capcom, and... <laughs> And oh, Nintendo, yeah, those Capcom. are the brand. Na- those are the big names. Yeah, I'm sure they were charging. They charge the top dollar. Cool. Oh yeah. Hold on, I got. A, I got a question. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Marco. Hold 100, on, Marco. Hundred points for Marco. If, if you if you were given it to, if if it was given to you as a gift, yeah. Don't would give you, it to would, me would you play it? No, I, I don't think so. My He's wife not into would. It. He's not into it. Just leave him. Just leave him alone. Fair leave enough. Leave me alone. It's his choice. <laughs> oh my god. Do, you, do any of you guys still have the original? I, I have right the original. T- it's yeah, right, there's one right behind you. No, that's the 20 feet behind you. There's one right behind you. There's a stack of games. Yeah, I lost. On the coffee table. I was, <laughs> I was yeah. losing Mar- mine, mine, Super, uh, was mine is Super still Mario. fully functional on my parents' house. So hold on. So you have a functional original. Yes. Why would you buy this one? Why not? Because the games are all built in. Because yeah. you don't have to blow on the end of the fucking yeah, cartridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. It was very common that you'd... <laughs> when games didn't want to work, you'd pull out the cartridge. Yeah. You'd blow on it. Yeah. And, and then you'd put it back in. Absolutely nothing. The, cartridge, the game was nothing. overly <laughs> mechanical. Like, the actual loading system. The connection. If you looked at it, you, put the, you, put, you slid the game in, and then you had to press down on it, and, you, and, you, and it dropped and clicked into the base. Mm. No one would ever design that system now. And actually, by the end of life of the NES, they actually redesigned it to look more like the SNES. So the game top-loaded and plugged right in. None of this spring-loaded bullshit design. And I think they may have realized right away that this is a mistake. Mm -hmm. There's too many moving parts. This is a classical design, engineering design flaw. There's too many excessive parts for no reason. They just... For some reason, they didn't want to reorient the the, the, the hardware, so that you plugged it right in. Gino, closing thoughts. Uh, the uh, classic NES, Baby NES, it's a good first cut. Um, I hope that they learn 
and listen to this podcast and discover how they can make it better. Um, if not, uh, I can almost guarantee there's going to be a Super NES version of this thing coming out. I there wonder. has to be. There has to be. I wonder. And uh, that is something where if they have, if they're going to sell you a Super Nintendo system with functional controllers with Street Fighter 2 on it, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll buy one. I'll oh. buy one. That's all I have to say. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gino. 500 points for you on this uh, on this uh, episode. JR, closing thoughts? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, the nostalgia is nice. The, the, the design flaws, unfortunately, are, are pretty short. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I might, I, might, I might look onto uh, an Android solution, see if I see, can yeah, I, sure. to bring back this retro gaming. Um, you know, you get a, you get a good. Uh, most of them have Wi-Fi. If you get a, a good, nice Android box, tap into. There's a lot of uh, NES emulators available on the on the Play Store. Most definitely. And uh, if you get a good uh, Bluetooth controller, very simple, low cost, connect it up. You're good to go. Yeah, you can eBay uh, eBay a Bluetooth Nintendo controller. I'm going to investigate seeing if I can. Uh, 30, 30 some odd dollars. I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm actually, I'm gonna look into seeing if I can connect, connect my old, uh, my old Wii controllers, which actually were Bluetooth. Oh. And seeing if I can connect, connect that. You can pair it. Yeah. Yeah. A That'd lot of people, neat. a lot of people were using that. There's a lot, a lot of stuff was using that in, back in the day because because it was straight up, uh, open, oh, you know, right, standardized Bluetooth connection. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to look into that. Interesting. We should get that on my YouTube channel. Okay. Well, that's our topic uh, for this week. Fantastic. Um, if you want to subscribe to our show and you um, found this episode lingering somewhere in a uh, washroom, um, <laughs> download it from the iTunes, uh, <laughs> from iTunes. Wash your hands first. <laughs> Google Play. Um Stitcher Radio and the, um, oh my gosh, now I'm getting a little sleepy, and uh, the TuneIn app, and you can um, tweet us, at Crew Roundtable, and add the hashtag AskTheCrew with your uh, topics and suggestions. Now, now Champ, if, uh, if one of our listeners wanted to uh, maybe get one of these NES uh, boxes on air uh, uh, for themselves... Where where would you recommend that they they par- purchase it? Well, I would suggest that they try buying their shit on Amazon, uh, Amazon's website. Uh, you can use the links at uh, um, at crewroundtable.com. Um, click your respective link, either Canada or USA, and search for your NES classic through our through our link. But you're gonna screw us on the price. No. <laughs> No, that's, uh, that's that's not quite my uh, my uh, my malcontented friend. Uh, we do get we do get a uh, a commission on every sale, but Amazon does not bump the price to, to to pay for it. You pay regular price whether you went just straight to Amazon's from your own, or if you go through our specialized link from the site, it's the same price. Doesn't cost you any extra, and gives us a little bit more money to plug back into the show and may, and improve our quality of the recordings. Definitely. Uh, Thanks for listening, and um, we'll see you next time.